All right, everyone. How did everyone enjoy lunch? No, I know. <laughs> I know. I was looking forward to those too. Oh, I hear you. We'll do better next year. Who would like a cookie? Oh. <laughs> I don't think we can eat them in here, but meet me outside afterwards and I will hook you up. <laughs> you came to the right talk. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Absol absolutely. Without any further ado, let's do it. Uh, next speaker is Michelle Frechette. Michelle is a director of community engagement for Stella WP at Liquid Web. Michelle was called the busiest woman in WordPress by Matt Mullenweg at Word Pre Word Camp US 2022, and that is so true. I see Michelle everywhere. She's awesome. In addition to her work at Stella WP, Michelle is the podcast barista at WPCoffeeTalk.com, co-founder of UnrepresentedInTech.com, creator of WPCareerPages.com, the president of the board for BigOrange.Heart.org, director of community relations and contributor at poststatus.com, co-host of the WP Motivate podcast, author, business coach, and frequent organizer and speaker at WordCamp events. Michelle's session today is, so you want to launch a podcast. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Michelle Frechette. Thank you for choosing podcasting over AI. <laughs> Just such a fun topic. I wish I was in Robbie's session right now, but um, I'm super excited to be here today and talk to y'all about podcasting. I do not consider myself an expert, although I have done a lot of podcasting. There are people who know how to do it better than I do, um, but I have a lot of fun with it, and I think that that is one of the most important things. If you take nothing more out of the session today, is if you don't love it, don't do it, because it shows through in everything that you do. But let's talk a little bit about podcasting today and how did I even get started in it? I attended WordCamp Portland, Maine. I want to say it was maybe 2017. And there was somebody in there talking about podcasting and I listened to his talk because someday I may have a customer who wants to do podcasting and I better know how to do that. And so I was freelancing at the time as a, as in marketing and building websites, and I was constantly talking to my customers and saying, and if you ever want to build a podcast, I can help you get started, because I listened to this one session at this Word, Word Camp one time, and nobody ever took me up on it. Apparently, like, there isn't a lot of call for podcasters for arborists, or for power washers, or the kind of customers and small businesses I was working with. But then I thought, I, w I still want to learn how to do it. So maybe I could start to learn, to learn and build my own podcast. So in May of 2019, I was like, wouldn't it kind of be fun to learn it anyway? That could be cool. And literally thought to myself, I'll probably get a few episodes done, and it'll die a sad little death. But if nobody really knows about it, what's the harm? And I still learned how to do it. So I thought, well, what would it even be about? How would I do it? And I thought, well, I don't know that I have enough to share to have a podcast like every week or every month or whatever, but just my own thoughts, who would even listen to that? But people like to learn about other people. So maybe I could do an interview podcast, which is what I started in 2019 with WP Coffee Talk. I was like, hey, by the way, team, because I worked at Give WP by that point, I'm like, I, I launched a podcast. I literally had somebody else build the website for me. I was training, I was coaching her. She built a website for me because I didn't have time for that at the time. And, um, Launched it on a Friday night. Don't ever launch on Friday, but I did. And like literally a day into it, I was like, huh, maybe it should have a, its own like Twitter account. So I made a Twitter account and started posting from that and then reposting from my own Twitter account, which had, a, I think I had about 1,200 followers in 2019. So it wasn't like I had a ton of people that were learning about it, but the right people heard about it. And I kind of left it alone for the weekend thinking, Maybe something will come of this, and maybe nothing will. By Monday, I had four people signed up to be on my podcast. I was like, wow, OK, I got at least four episodes I can go forward with. And by the end of the first week of recording, I had 12 recordings. And I knew that I had at least a couple months' worth. And the thing is, it's like kind of steamrolled and kept going. 
And it was really taking off. And as of today, I have over 150 episodes recorded, 122, 123. I think I just posted another one, so I think it's 123 now, that are actually published. And the best part of all is it's not about me. It's about all the people in the WordPress community and learning how people use WordPress. And that was super exciting to me. I begin every episode by saying, welcome to the next episode of WP Coffee Talk. I'm your, WordPress, your podcast barista, Michelle Frechette, serving up the stories of the WordPress community from all over the world. Today, my guest is, and introducing my guest, it's schmaltzy. It's a shtick. I love it. And people like to hear people who are interested in having fun with it. And if you start by saying, I'm a podcast barista, that's fun, right? It's like, who else can say that? Nobody else in the world has claimed that title, so I get to be that. And that's what's exciting. And when I say all over the world, I really mean all over the world. Look at all the countries that have been represented. I have interviewed somebody on every continent except Antarctica. It's really hard for them to get Wi-Fi down there. <laughs> and I haven't found, and I have actually messaged people through blogs that were stationed down there at the time, like, please be on my podcast. I see that you have a WordPress blog. I want to talk to you. Hasn't happened yet. So if you have it in, hook me up and I will find a way to thank you. <laughs> But it's been so much fun to have people from all over the world. And it's really been fun to, you know, if you know me at all, you know I have a platform of, about representation. And wanting people who are underrepresented, underrepresented in tech and in our community in WordPress to have more seats at the table, to have better recognition, to have a bigger voice in what we do. And I will interview everybody and anybody. And I have interviewed people from all over the world, and from men and women and non-binary folks, Every uh, ethnicity you can think of, every disability you can think of, I've talked to people all over the world. And at my one year anniversary, I had this big online party. It was a pandemic, so like, everybody join me on Zoom. We're going to talk about how we've had a, a full year of podcasting so far. And somebody on, the, on that call said to me, you're the only podcaster in North America who invites people from India and Bangladesh and Pakistan to be on your podcast. And I thought that is so interesting that other people aren't doing that. So how can I help other podcasters do that too? So talking about podcasting is not only a way to help you learn to do podcasting, but a way to think about having representation in all that you do as well. So the format for WP Coffee Talk, I averaged about 40 minutes, had one guy talk for 120 minutes. <laughs> And I was like, I don't edit these down. I don't know what's going to happen with this episode. And like, at what point people, the listenership will trail off. But most of them are about 40 minutes. I've had one as, as brief as about 20 minutes because I think there was a little bit of a language barrier. And like, they had already, they knew what their answers were because I share the questions in advance. It's not, if you've listened to one episode, you know what the questions are. So like, he just answered the question. And I was like pulling teeth to get him to talk more. So sometimes it can be challenging. Um, you either can't get somebody to talk or you can't get them to stop talking. But somewhere in between is the average, so about 40 minutes. Everybody anywhere in the WordPress community I'm happy to have as a guest. Very well-known people have been on my podcast, including Matt Mullenweg, which was a true, like, that's the only time I've ever been nervous. I'm like, what if my internet goes down when I'm talking to Matt Mullenweg? But um, everybody from that to people who have just started their first blog or who are using WordPress in a different format. They all get the same set of questions. And almost anything goes. Like, there are a couple episodes I chose not to publish because people were so self-serving with it and trying to be self-promotional. But basically, I don't censor. People have dropped the F-bomb on there. I don't really think kids are tuning in, so I'm not too concerned about it. Um, but anything goes. You can talk about anything you want. But like I said, I do reserve the right not to publish an episode. I had one guy who was interrupted four times, answered his phone in the middle, and I was like, I am not editing this, so I, I chose not to put that episode out. But I do have takeaways from that experience of starting the whole thing, which is people think it's my podcast, but it's really everybody else's podcast. I literally just ask questions and let them talk because it turns out we really like to talk about ourselves, right? If you're going to put yourself, say, I want to talk in a podcast, you're somebody who wants to share about what they've done. So I don't really have to do a whole lot of work other than 
Okay, yeah, I have a lot of prep, I have a lot of editing, I have a lot of things that I have to do after the fact. But during the interview, I pretty much just ask a question and listen to people talk about the things that they love, which is super exciting. Most of my guests have never listened to an episode, which is fine. That doesn't bother me at all. They also don't read what I send them in advance, <laughs> which is okay. But I'll say to them, have you had an opportunity to see the questions? Oh, no, you sent questions in advance? Yes, everybody gets asked the same set of questions. Here are the questions. And we'll, so we spend a little bit of time at the beginning going over what that is so that nothing feels like a gotcha question or they don't know, because there's nothing worse in podcasting than dead air. If somebody's watching it, that's great. They can see that somebody's thinking. But if you're listening to it and suddenly there's nothing there, you, you might have to edit some of that out. So I, I try to make sure everybody is well prepared. Scheduling internationally, even with something like Calendly, can really be a painful um, experience and sometimes people are like texting me going I I'm on here I'm waiting for you and I'm like um, I'm supposed to be there in an hour I'm sorry I'll, let's let me see what I can do but international scheduling can be painful especially during the time of periods where part of the world has changed their clocks and the other part hasn't yet and those kinds of things so if you are doing international keep that in mind but very much what I have discovered is that people are generous and kind with their time with their efforts sponsorship dollars, things like that. It has been a wonderful experience, all that I've been able to do, because everybody has been so incredibly generous and kind. But also rendering video is a giant pain in the rear end, and so if you're gonna do video, just make sure that you have the equipment to process that, and I'll talk about that in a little bit too. So let's get into the advice and the how-tos, because I know that's what you're here to hear about. One thing I say is determine what the format of your podcast is. So WP Coffee Talk is a question-answer interview format. It's me, it's a guest. Sometimes there's two guests, so a husband and wife team that are building a project, for example. I might interview two people at a time. But generally speaking, it's me and one other person on the other end of a Zoom call, recording audio, recording video, and then what I'm going to do with that afterwards. You could have multi-host dialogue, which is also interview. So I have a new podcast coming out soon. Um, you'll be able to find it eventually on StellarWP.com called WP Constellations. Jeff Chandler and I are the co-hosts, and we interview our guests on that episode. You can have single host dialogue or multi-host dialogue where it's just the two of you talking or just you talking about things. So if you listen to um, Audacity Marketing uh, podcast with me and Hazel Kimbo or you listen to WP Motivate with me and Kathy Zant, it's the two of us talking. The WP Motivate one is literally once a week we get together, we shoot the breeze, we hope it's motivational to other people, we talk about things that are uplifting, and we put that out as a podcast. Hazel and I have one on marketing, and with the marketing one, we're giving advice and talking about things that you can do to be, make audacious moves in marketing. So those are, much, those are all different formats. You decide, think ahead what kind of format you want to have so that you have a basic blueprint moving forward. I know people that do product review podcasts. So they, maybe they have, are getting people that are giving them access to plugins or themes, and then they use it and walk through it, and then they do a review on it, and that's great too. And then there's also topicals. So you might have something that's, um, like this week in WordPress, for example, with Nathan Wrigley on the WP Builds website. Every week is like specifically what's happened in WordPress in the last week, and how can we as a group discuss that? So d determine what that looks like for you. If you choose an interview format, oh, by the way, all of the slides are gonna be online. I will share that link out at the end if you'd like. Um, if you choose the interview format, make sure that it's easy for people to figure out how to be on the show. There's nothing worse than trying to find people to be on your show. So make it easy for them to do that. So one of the ways, and, you'll, and I, I'm gonna pull out from a few, a few slides forward, is have a website with a form that says, hey, I want to be on the show. How do I do that? They fill out a form, I get an email, and I can decide if I want that person on my show or not, determining why they want to be on the show. Like, there's a question, like, why do you want to be on the show? I have a new product I want to talk about. This is not the show for that. So, you know, maybe go talk to this person or that person, or is there another way that we can get around that? But make it easy for people to ask to be on the show. And usually, a form is less threatening than DM me on some place where you've got to like, hey, can I be on your show, right? If you've got a format, 
that makes it easy for people to do that. They know that's something that you're welcoming, and it's something that's easy for them to do. But don't make it easy for people to find your scheduling link. You don't want people on your calendar unless you've invited them to be on your calendar. So I have a page that says, I want to be on the show. I have a hidden page that says, great, I'd love for you to be on the show. Here's the calendar link. Here are all the questions. Let me know. I actually moved the calendar link to the bottom so that maybe they'll actually see the questions <laughs> before they sign up. Um, and I, make it, I try to make it as easy as possible with that follow-up for them. And then I do try to prepare them as much as possible. The auto-reply that they get once they sign up on my calendar link says, here are the questions <laughs> that are going to be on the show. Here are some episodes you might want to listen to. Um, I send them reminders, automated reminders, like, hey, we're going to see you tomorrow at such and such a time. Make sure you have headphones or earbuds that work to, to control. If you have a microphone, make sure that it's ready, those kinds of things. Um, and so I send that. And I send it again. So they get that at least twice. I ask in advance if they have any questions so that if they do, we can answer them in advance and not have to have a lot of time during our hour together of recording to move through those things. And then I get as much quest as information about them that I might need for the show notes beforehand. And that is one of those, please learn from my mistakes. Because what I used to do is, great, thanks for being on the show. Here's a form to fill out with all of your information to include in the show notes. And so many times, people wouldn't fill that out. And I have to keep begging them for information before I could actually publish their episode. Now I make it as part of the intake. So if they're going to interview, they're going to sign up on my calendar, there's required questions that they have to fill out in advance, like what's your Twitter handle? What's your WordPress.org handle? May I have your headshot? Like those things that I really need to have, I ask for in advance so that I don't have to beg people for information after the fact. And then if you do choose a multi-host dialogue, determine your topic in advance when possible. So. Um, for marketing, uh, Hazel and I will message each other earlier in the week, like, what are we thinking might be a good topic this week? So that we can do a little bit of research and make sure that we're not just bringing our own experiences, but we're bringing some information to the table as well. Um, Kathy and I, it's always like, so what happened this week? What do we want to talk about? And we take the first 10 minutes of our time together to discuss that before we start to hit record. Allie and I, and underrepresented in tech, we really want to make sure that we have information to share. So we will talk about those topics before we ever get on screen with one another. So that as we're talking about underrepresented things and things that affect people. So if we're talking about um, an episode on fat shaming, for example, we've done a lot of research about what fat shaming looks like, not just from my experiences, but also from other people's experiences and what kind of research there is in the world so that we're bringing facts behind the things that we're trying to share. So make sure that you have thought about those things in advance. And then when you do show up with each other, take 10 minutes to kind of pull your resources together so that we both aren't both bringing the same exact um, experiences. We have, like, well, I'll talk about this, I'll talk about that, I'm going to lead today, I'm going to follow, those kinds of things. But also, don't over talk those first 10 minutes so that you are like just rehashing when you hit that record button. It's like, here's our outline. Here's the conversation and the recording, as opposed to let's have the conversation, let's have the conversation again. Because the fresher it is, the more exciting it is for people to listen to. Save it for the show. That right there. If you choose single host dialogue, which means you're just on, on there by yourself talking about whatever, make sure you're also doing your research in advance because nothing's worse than um, what was I going to talk about next? Uh, I forgot to do this. And, if I don't have my outline, I, I hit record, I hit end, and I'm like, oh, man, I forgot to include this, that, or the other. So make sure that you've got yourself well scheduled out in advance. You've got a little outline, your talking points that you want to make sure that you cover. Keep an eye on the clock. It's as easy to go over time, but it's also easy to go under time. When you're giving a talk like this today, like, I have to keep looking at the clock, make sure, because like, oh gosh, I can talk for an hour, and then the, like, we need the room. Or I could be like, okay, and that's all, thanks for coming. And they're like, you got 30 more minutes, Michelle. So you've got to kind of keep an eye on things, make sure that you're filling the time appropriately, but you're not going over so that people kind of don't, aren't interested in listening anymore. And then you'll see this one, the last line says, don't fret about anything that you can't control. I once sneezed in the middle of a video recording that was a 45-minute video recording, and it was for a webinar. 
And I got, like, I wasn't, like, in, I didn't want to edit it. I wanted to do it all in one take. And I was trying so hard to ignore the itch in my nose as it was going. And in the middle, I was just like, I did you. <laughs> I was like, and I just kept going with it. Because I was like, you know what? I wouldn't get on stage, like, today, sneeze, and go, oh, man, we got to start over. So why not? Why would I do that in a video recording? And it also just showed how human I am, right? That everybody sneezes, everybody coughs. Every once in a while, I'll, have, I'll sniffle, and forget to mute my mic first. And like, oh, most people won't, know, won't even notice. But I think the sneeze was pretty obvious. But also, who cares? It's all good. Just keep going. You also really want to determine your frequency. So you don't have to adhere to it 100%, right? So if you say, I'm going to have one every week, and then you get sick or you go on vacation or work is just like crazy that week. If you miss a week, your audience will forgive you. I missed a year and a half of WP Coffee Talk because the pandemic took a real toll on my executive dysfunction, anxiety, and depression. And guess what? I put an episode out three weeks ago, and it's got just as much listenership as the ones a year and a half ago because people will still want to listen. They will forgive you. They understand that we're human. But try to, f try to stick to a frequency if you can so that people know what to expect. Are you doing weekly? Are you doing monthly? Are you doing biweekly? Like I said, be OK with miss missing an episode on occasion. Life happens. Things come up. We are human beings. It's OK. And I will promise you that even your sponsors are still OK with it. They understand that you're a human being. They're not looking for X number of episodes. Or if they're paying per episode, they're still getting four episodes or 10 episodes. It's just that one week was a hiatus, whatever that works like, looks like with them. Um, but I've never once had anybody come at me because I took time off or I'm a human being and I got sick or whatever was the reason. Um, Kathy and I try to record every single week. I was in WordCamp Europe, and then I had COVID um, all of last week. And so I missed two weeks recording with her. This week, I'm, I'm COVID-free, and I'm back at work, and we recorded, and it was like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in so long. And it was exciting to have that time together. Nobody once has said, yo, WP Motivate, where are you? I'm missing my motivation, right? So it, it's all good. People are good with it. And it is OK to stray from your normal format every once in a while. So for WP Coffee Talk, my 50th episode, we turned the tables, and I had somebody interview me on my own podcast asking those same kinds of questions so that you got to learn a little bit more about me. So it's OK to, to stray. If you are somebody that's doing um, product review, and maybe next week we're going to, like we talk about this product this week, next week I'm going to have the developer on. We're going to talk to the developer about that. Or I really like the way somebody's doing something in the community. I'm going to have an interview show every once in a while. It's OK to break your format. Um, as long as you know what you're doing and you have a, a roadmap going forward. Another thing everybody always wants to know about, well, what equipment do I need? And I will tell you, you need whatever equipment you have. I know people who are podcasting off of a cell phone, and that's what they have. They don't have a microphone. They don't even have earbuds. They're using their cell phone to do their recording. Is it the best sound? Is it the best audio? Is it the best video? Nope. Does that matter? Nope. They're not trying to be Joe Rogan or, you know, I can't even think of who the major, major podcasters are right now, but like all those big like true crime podcasts, they're not trying to be that. They're trying to share from their heart or they're trying to talk about things that matter to people. In that case, start with what you have. As you determine that it's something you want to continue to do, and as you, perhaps you get sponsorship dollars in, upgrade your equipment. So I started with a $35 microphone off of Amazon, because that's what I could afford. I did not have nice headphones. I had just plain old, like, wired earbuds. Like, I think I got them on a plane. Like, it was not good, right? It was not good. But that's what I started with, and the camera that was just on my old MacBook Air. If you go back and look at those first couple episodes, the audio isn't as good as it is now. The video isn't as good as it is now. But the interviews are awesome. And that's what's important. Can you understand? Can you see? Absolutely. That's what's important. So I have since been able to afford to upgrade my equipment. I've got a nice Yeti mic on one, in one office. I've got a great Shure mic on the other. My audio sounds fantastic. I love it. But if you don't have that, if you can't afford to invest $150 in a microphone, don't. It's OK. Start with what you have and move forward. 
The one thing I will tell you, though, is on that old MacBook Air, 45 minutes of video took up to seven to eight hours to process. Because I had a slower processor, I didn't have as much memory. It was not the right equipment for the job. Did I do it? Did I use it? Did I set it up to run overnight because I couldn't even use my computer when it was working? Yes. So having a better laptop, being able to invest in um, something with more memory, and it, it has helped a tremendous amount. Now I can, up, I can run um, video for 45 minutes. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to render, as opposed to eight hours. So yes, your equipment can absolutely make you insane, <laughs> or it can, can help you. Um, but, but you use what you have, and you upgrade as you can. The software, people ask me all the time, well, what software do you use? And it really depends on, again, what do you have? A lot of us are using Macs. It usually comes with GarageBand. I never could figure out how to use GarageBand. I could never figure out how to use iMovie. I don't use those. I use Audacity. If you, I think it's audacity.com. It's a free download, and you can process all of your audio with Audacity. So that's what I use for um, my audio podcasting. I have an Adobe subscription from way back when. I think I pay $20 a month for Adobe. I have Adobe Rush. I use that for video processing. Works really well for me. Use what you like. Use what you know. It's all good. There's no one right answer to that. Um, I love free. I love low cost. So Audacity was great for me. And that, uh, that I could get Adobe Rush as part of my Adobe plan was great. But use what you have and you know, what you're comfortable with. What your comfort level is will absolutely matter in how you process, um, process your audio and your video. Because if you get frustrated with it, you're not going to love it as much. So use things that make sense to you with a low um, threshold for learning. And then I always say, prepare for disaster, right? Like, what if this happens? What if in the middle of my interview with Matt Mullenweg, my internet had gone down? Like, I'm always thinking about the disaster. Like, have my phone as a backup so I can quick switch over and tether to my, uh, my Apple phone, whatever. But I didn't expect <laughs> that I would have to prepare for success. And that's where I was like, oh my god. I had to figure out how to control how much of my time was going into interviews. Because if you do 12 interviews in a week, that's 12 weeks worth of at least. If now I'm saying to somebody, I'm recording with you, but it's not going to be out until December. Like, you've got to think about that, right? So limit the, like, I had to limit the number of appointments were on my calendar. So that if more than four in a week, I wasn't doing more than four. And then it was like, now I just do one. If I, there's only one spot. If somebody wants to record it with me, it's like next week, you can have that one spot or the week after so that I'm not overwhelming myself with the success I didn't expect. So you really have to think about that. Like I said, I hoped that somebody might sign up. To have 12 people sign up for the first week was just like mind-blowing, super exciting, and then was like, oh, but I actually have to do that now. <laughs> and not only do I have to spend 12 hours interviewing, it's about two hours per episode to run the processing on that, create the web page for that, put out all of the social media for that. That's a lot of work, so now I've, it's a full, like 12 podcasts in one week is like 40 hours worth of work, and I actually have a full-time job, so that wasn't going to work. So you have to really figure out ways to make sure that you don't overdo for yourself and become overwhelmed with what, you, what should be a passion project and should be something that you enjoy doing. Every podcast does not have to be monetized. You absolutely can create a podcast to earn money, 100%, but you don't have to. And I think it's important to remember that if you don't have sponsors and you can afford the time and the energy to do the podcasting, do it. Nobody says that you have to have sponsors to go forward with anything. When I first started WP Coffee Talk and nobody really knew who I was in the industry, I didn't have a lot of sponsorship. I didn't let that stop me. When I started to get sponsors and I was like, ooh, I just made money podcasting. I think that makes me a professional podcaster. <laughs> And that was exciting to me. But remember that when you create opportunities for sponsorship, you actually have responsibilities to your sponsors. So now, on some of my podcasting, the sponsorship is ridiculously expensive because it takes a lot of work to build the responsibility back to your sponsors. So if I say that if you are a sponsor, you get mid-roll, 
advertising or, or you know, in the intro or the outro advertising. I'm going to shout you out. I'm going to put you on the website. That's work that I have to do then. So how much work am I willing to do? I'm going to make it ridiculously expensive so that it's worth my while, so I don't really have to do it unless somebody's really willing to pay for it. P.S. Nobody's sponsoring WP Motivate yet because nobody wants to spend that kind of money, and we aren't, haven't been around long enough to say, and we have thousands of listeners. And that's okay because we really do it for us and to share with other people. If somebody wanted to give us five grand, we would gladly take it and, <laughs> and maybe go on vacation or whatever, but that's not why we're doing it. But if you want to monetize it, there are ways to do that. Number one, ask for sponsors. You can absolutely knock on the doors of different companies and say, I think you'd be a great sponsor for my podcast. What do you say? Here's what I'm offering. Here's the page. Um, I created a page on all of my sites where somebody can sign up for sponsorship. I collect their money right then and there. They upload their logo. They upload a, the blip about their, um, their business. And then I can add all of that to my website very easily so I don't have to go in search of. If somebody were to sign up and it was a company that I couldn't get behind, I could just refund their money and say, thank you, no thank you. But I try to make it super easy for people to give me money because who doesn't want to make it easy to get money, right? Um, and then just do direct asks. You can put it out on social media. I absolutely put it out on social media. I have a tip jar on my site. Um, it's kind of like a... Patreon in a way, like I don't want to go through Patreon, which you absolutely can do. But I have a, a page that's like tip the barista. It's like, you know, it's like the little jar on the, uh, on the coffee shop uh, counter. And I've gotten about $300 over four years. Not a ton of money, but that's $300 I didn't have if I didn't put a tip jar up on my website. So why not, right? So put that tip jar up there. Let people appreciate the work that you do. And then also I have affiliate links. So if somebody decides to purchase hosting or any of the other things I have affiliate, I get a kickback from that too. Just if you do affiliate links, re recognize that the law says you have to disclose that you're making money. So there's a the little caveat for that. And like I said, get the word out. It's, it's great to have a podcast. It sucks when you and your mom are the only ones listening to it. <laughs> and my mom doesn't know what a podcast is, so let's face it. She's not listening to it. But, um, but get the word out. Build, it, build social. You don't have to have a um, an account, a Twitter account or a Mastodon account or whatever for your podcast if you don't want to. You can do it from your own, um, your own account and, and build it out there. There's benefits to both. I like to have, sorry, all of a sudden Siri is going to tell us how to have a podcast. Um, huh. You can put it out there. Uh, I like to have an account for my podcast and then rebroadcast that from my own personal account and boost those signals in two places. Um, but you don't have to. Do whatever you have the capacity to do and the desire to do. Don't start a social media account and just expect people to follow you. You have to go out and follow people. You have to promote it from your own account and kind of get the word out around it. And also, it's not just enough to follow people and be able to um, put out your own content. You actually have to be part of the conversation. So if there are things like underrepresented in tech, and people are talking about things that have to do with underrepresentation, we'll retweet that will respond to things as that account. We will start conversations with that account so that we're also relevant as part of the conversation that's happening around our topics. Also, send, there's no, nothing says you can't still send press releases, right? My big advice on sending press release is to put the body of the press release in the email. And don't make a PDF attachment because nobody wants to open PDF attachments if they don't know who you are. So just send it in the body of an email. Send it to places like if you're starting a WordPress podcast, Send it to the repository. Send it to Post Status. Send it to the Week in WordPress. Send it to all of those, the Weekly WP, so that they can include it, a blurb and a link back to it that, hey, there's a new podcast hosted by so-and-so about such and such a topic. Um, they may not run it, but they might, and that's free advertising if they do. Um, post it in any Slack channel. So every time we come up with a new um, episode for, for underrepresented in tech, I'm out there posting it in different Slack channels under self-promotion, under-representation, under whatever, wherever it applies, I'll make sure people see it because I might get a few more listeners. And then tag creators that might be interested, but tag carefully. I hate when somebody tags me on social media because they think that by tagging me, my followers will see it and that I'm just okay with it. I would much prefer if somebody DMs me and says, is it okay if I 
tag you in this, or if I post this, will you repost it for me? Um, sometimes I say yes, sometimes I say no. I don't want to be everybody else's mouthpiece. I don't want to be the account that just turns out other people's information. But if it's relevant and if it's something I'm involved in, I'd be happy for you to tag me. But make sure that you approach people first before you just tag blindly. Um, when people just tag blindly or tag on to something underneath one of my posts that's absolutely not relevant, like, hey, check out my Fiverr, I will always bl uh, report that person and respond <laughs> negatively to their tweet. So be careful. Um, but do your outreach. Make sure that you're talking to people and that you are putting your word out in multiple ways that you get your followers. And then listen to different podcasts. Like one of the best ways to find out how you want your podcast to be is to listen to different formats and determine what feels more natural to you. Is it having two people? Is it you talking by yourself? Is it having these interviews where you can interview other people? One of my, um, one of my favorite examples of... Um, a funny thing in podcasting. There was a show, some of you may be aware of it, called The Middle. And it was a middle class family in the middle of America. And their youngest child was interested, so interested in fonts. And he thought fonts were the best thing. And he knew, like, he could look at a font and be like, Helvetica, Comic Sans, Ariel, and like, whatever. He just knew them all. So he started a podcast on fonts. And he had one episode. And then he, on his second episode, he said, well, that's about all I had to share about fonts. And thank you to my one listener. And that was it. And he was, like, satisfied that he'd done his thing. But most of us don't go into podcasting to have one episode. That's called a webinar, by the way. To have one episode and then thank our one person that was listening who might have been your mother. I don't know. Um, so make sure that you um, listen to different podcasts. Learn what it is you like to do. And then, just like I talk to people about blogging, have you ever given advice to somebody who wants to start a blog to say, make sure you have at least 12 things, 12 different posts you can talk about for a full year of posts if you only posted once a month. The same is true about podcasting. I have, you know, maybe you want to talk about SEO, and you have five episodes, and you're like, gosh, what else is there to talk about? I don't know, you know, kind of thing. So make sure you have enough material to move forward and be able to continue to not only have the material that, to, to push forward, but that you continue to love what you're doing. Um, I will always say that jo Joe Casabona's classes on podcasting are top notch. If you need advice on how to do any of that, look at Joe Casabona's website. Um, I can't remember what it's called. I can tweet it out later. Um, ask for help from friends and colleagues who are podcasters. I have people all the time DM me and say, Hey, what was, that, um, you know, what was that software that you recommended? Or what microphone do you use? Or what do you think about this for a topic or a title? I'm always happy to help that way. I'm a resource. Use me. There are other people who would love to give you advice and you know, knock things off the, you know, the walls onto each other. And I can't think of the right words today. But um, be able to be a sounding board for one another. And then also read up on podcasting ideas. Like Look and see, too. Like, Let's agree there are a million WordPress podcasts, and I probably have half of them. But there's always room for more. If you're coming at things with a different angle, you're approaching things with different topics, you have a different way to present information, you might be the person that other people want to listen to about your topic. Don't let the fact that there are a lot of other WordPress podcasts out there deter you from doing something that you think you can make a difference with and that you think you would love. Listen to other podcasts to find where your niche might be and where you think there might be a gap in what already is out there so that you have a platform to move forward with. And I always say there are a lot of people who build podcasts and they just put them out. If you search for their podcast, you will find it on wherever they're hosted. So maybe it's on Castos or maybe it's on... Spotify or SoundCloud or all these different places you can host your podcast. And that's like their homepage. You don't have traffic to you that you control if you don't have a website. You also don't have a page where you can put your sponsors. You also don't have a page where people can sign up to be on your podcast. You also don't have a place where you can do any of the things you want, your own bio, all of that. You can absolutely aggregate to those things. All of my podcasts are hosted on hosting platforms. 
but they're, they're embedded on my website. So there's a place where all of that information is in one site and where I can build SEO to that, to that podcast. So find a way to build your own website. Everybody here is in WordPress. We all know how to create a website, build a website for your podcast. That means that people have a place. Nobody else gets your domain name. Like Nobody else can have WPCoffeeTalk.com because I launched a podcast but didn't claim a URL. Claim your URL. Make sure you have a place for the signups. Make sure you have a place for people to give you money. Um, the affiliate links, the sponsors, all of that. You only have the, the ability to do that if you have your own website. So do your own website. Make sure that you have that. But like I said, have fun with it. It's, a, it's not about the money. You can do it for money if you want, but that shouldn't be what drives you, right? It takes a while to make money podcasting. I cannot quit my day job for my podcasting um, side projects. I cannot retire on my podcasting. Some people build up the podcast to where they absolutely can, and more power to them. I think that's wonderful. That's not where my mindset is around it. I'm not in it to make money. I love money, but I'm not in it to make money. And so I have a day job that pays my mortgage and puts food on my table. Don't do it for the glory, because guess what? That takes time, too. And I have people who disagree with me all the time, and that's not glorious either. But it's not about building fame and fortune. It's about doing something that you love. I don't podcast anything because I think I should do it. I do it because I want to, because I love it. And maybe there's a little hubris in thinking that people value my opinion, so I'm going to put stuff out on the internet. But that's OK, too. And like I always say, even if five people are listening to it on a regular basis, but I'm having fun, and I'm not spending a ton of money, I am spending time, that's fine, too, and really enjoy what I do. But do it because you have a passion to share whatever it is you have a passion. If, maybe it's fonts. I don't know. Um, I don't know if you all watch Big Bang Theory, but Sheldon had like a four podcast episode on flags and uh, semaphore, all of that kind of stuff. So find something that you love and that you would really have a passion about doing. That's what I have for you today. Um, you can see my website's up here. If you go to, uh, I didn't put it on here, but meetmichelle.online. I will post on Twitter today, if you follow me at all, at Michelle Ames on Twitter, I'll post the link to these slides so that you have access to the slides. And I am very sincere when I say I would love to be a resource for you. You can DM me on Twitter, Slack, wherever. You can email me through my website. I am happy to answer any questions that you have anytime about podcasting or WordPress in general. Um, I really love our community, and I love what we do and how we share. And so if there's anything I can do to help you move forward, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, so I'd love to take any questions. I also, um, shameless plug, I have the world's most hedonistic stickers in the whole world, because I have stickers that are the Michelle Wapu. So if you'd like one of my stickers, I'm happy to give you one. And I do have three copies of my book today, so the first three people that ask a really good question can have a copy of my book today, too. So now I hope you're thinking about questions. So, <laughs> But yeah, I'd love to answer any questions y'all have. So if you do, let's hear it. Otherwise, we just get another bigger break. Oh, we got questions. Yay. Always happy. For your very first podcast... Do you say it's your first podcast? Heck yeah. <laughs> How real should you get? <laughs> OK, so I like to keep it real for a couple reasons. Number one, there's an excitement with a launch, right? So if it's your first podcast, heck yeah. Be excited about it. Tell everybody, we're, this is our inaugural episode, right? It's not like they don't know. <laughs> they go to your website. It's not like, where's the other ones? Plus. If you make mistakes, it's easier to forgive a first timer than it is ever somebody who's been doing it forever. So absolutely have fun with it and like use every bit of that first podcast to really put it out there and be celebratory. Absolutely. We're passing the mic around. There we go. Quick question. Yeah. What is your what are your thoughts on taking paid advertising in mid roll? From the, from the host, like Buzzsprout? Mm -hmm. I think it really depends on the podcast, and it depends on your purpose for podcasting. So I, first of all, I hate mid-roll advertising for myself because I don't want to edit. I want to just like take everything and add bumpers at the front and the, and the back. 
But at underrepresented in tech.com, we do have mid roll advertisement. All of our advertisers are people who support underrepresentation and not just tokenizing it because our whole purpose is representation without tokenization. So those people who are investing money, they know they're investing their money in people who are creating controversy and saying the hard things in WordPress, because we do. Um, I don't want to have to do the, the editing on that, but Allie does. <laughs> so I'm perfectly happy that she likes to do that. But it really is up to you and your platform and your purpose. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If you do mid-roll, make sure you're keeping it to a minimum so you don't lose um, you know, you don't lose uh, your listeners at that point in time, um, 30 seconds or less, and keep it rolling. Did you have a follow-up question? Because yeah. the reason I asked the question is I have a client who is, I've been working with way too long at this point, <laughs> is he doesn't want to use social media, he doesn't want to go and do any other form of promotion except pay for a hundred dollars for ads into to get traffic he doesn't want to build a website we abandoned that he doesn't want to use any of the social so i'm like how else are you going to promote this the, the show so that's why i'm asking that question. So basically what you just told me is you have somebody who wants to have a podcast for an echo chamber because they're not looking for listenership because you really have to be able to put yourself out socially to build any kind of listenership. I mean, there are those people who go viral because they just hit the right topic and the right person hears it. But let's, let's agree that that is like mostly a fantasy world that that happens in. So they absolutely need to invest um, either time, resources, or both in making sure that they're getting the word out. And, and social media is really the place to do that. Hi, thanks so much for your talk. Sure. Um, I'm curious about podcasting from the perspective of um, just giving people a platform to talk about their passion and get clients to their business. Do you yeah. think that this is, are you seeing a lot of people being successful with getting clients and customers by talking about a topic that's close enough to their business? So yes and no. It depends on what the business is. So, for example, like I, I said at the beginning, I, I, when I was freelancing, I had a customer who was a power washer. Mm -hmm. So they would power wash your house, or your driveway, your gutters, whatever. Nobody's tuning into a podcast about getting the bird poo off the side of your house. <laughs> but if you are maybe, um, maybe you're a gardener and you are a landscaper and people really want to learn about the right kinds of flowers for the area they live or how to winterize their shrubbery and those kinds of things. If they're creative enough and engaging enough, that could be a podcast that could really grow. No pun intended. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, so it really depends, right? And, and I say that about the power washers. It's possible that a power washing podcast could go crazy, especially if you, like, there's a subreddit called power washing porn because people love to watch, like ASMR, right? They love to watch, <laughs> like, that, that dirty, nasty driveway, like, glisten again, right? So you do it the right way, perhaps, right? But it really needs to be engaging. That's the biggest thing, is it needs to be engaging. I noticed you said it doesn't work for some people. I was wondering <laughs> if you have seen. Thank you. Yeah, so, like, our, our Audacity Marketing Podcast, we have a thing on there, like, we'll... we'll consult with you, right? Like you need a marketing plan, you can pay us to do a marketing plan. We actually had somebody reach out to this week, us this week, fairly big WordPress company that y'all probably have heard of, but I'm not dropping names because we're not hired yet, but who said they're interested in hiring us to do all of their marketing, their SEO, their social, their all of that kind of thing. We didn't start the podcast hoping that we would suddenly have a side job for another market, for a, a WordPress company, but having the podcast actually drove that business into us. So this week's episode that's going to go out next week, you're going to hear about how to use podcasting to gain customers and use it as a marketing tool. So it is absolutely possible. It just really needs to be handled in the right way to reach the right audience because podcasting is really about reaching the right audience and how you do that. And then keep them. You can get them, but you have to engage them and keep them. So interesting because I have a podcast that's Garden Dilemmas, Delights, and Discoveries in the Garden of Life. I know. 
How's it growing? It's growing. <laughs> um, actually, I'm a landscape designer by trade, and so it does help my business in terms of you know branding and that. Sure. Thing. But one of my questions is, I have a website that hosts my column, which is a weekly column in a newspaper local to me, and the podcast is kind of a spinoff of that. Yeah. Although there's more to it. Um, so I have a page on my WordPress site for the podcast. Should I have a separate website for the podcast? No, you don't need to. If you already have a business and you're doing it within your business, that is perfectly fine. We're launching WP Constellations as part of Stellar WP. It's going to live at StellarWP.com. It's going to have its own um, archive of all of our podcast episodes. That is perfectly fine. If you're building a podcast separate from your business, then it should probably have its own site. Okay. Great. I, I have another follow-up. Sorry, if you wouldn't mind. So right now, mine is just audio, uh -huh. and I would love to have it on YouTube, or I've been told it would be a good idea since, yeah. you know, for SEO and all that good stuff. And I was thinking of just doing an, a video clip of what the episode's about, mm -hmm. and scrolling images, and I guess it would be on YouTube. Is that what you would think? Yeah, you could totally do that. I think um, people are, if they're going to just listen... And watching scrolling images is probably not as engaging as watching you or your face as you talk about things, especially when you're doing interviews, right? People like to see the faces of the people that they're interviewing and when they laugh, what do they look like when they laugh? What do they look like when they're thinking? Like those are things as human beings that we connect with. So if you can record the, the video at the same time you're doing the audio, it's gonna get you further than, than just images, but images work too, right? It's probably just a little less engaging than if it was faces of people talking. And you did bring up something that I wish I'd put in my slide, so I'm gonna mention it now. Um, for SEO, make sure, not just for SEO, it really works well for SEO, but for people who are hearing, hear, hard of hearing or deaf, make sure you have transcripts. So if you go to WP Coffee Talk, you are not gonna see transcripts for the first 100 something episodes, because I didn't know. Right. And I'm going to go back and backfill those, but it's gonna take a lot of time and money to do that. But every episode I have of all my podcasts going forward, all of the underrepresented in tech, WP Motivate, and Audacity, we have transcripts on there. And it's for the deaf community and the hard of hearing community. But boy, does the SEO work really well, too. <laughs> I, I learned that, too. Thank you for sharing. That's important. Sure. Thank you. I'm going to dovetail on what Mary said. Um, I uh, have shot a lot of videos. I take people who are spec riding on the beach, mm -hmm. and it's great content. And I have a subscription list that I haven't really promoted. And I'm listening to you thinking, just as Mary said, should I try to um, create a presence on YouTube? And is there an SEO uh, linking that I'm trying to, you, uh, to capture more people? I'm, I'm just kind of... I don't really know how to take what started. But yeah, I'm not an SEO expert by any stretch of the imagination. But if you have a really good description on YouTube and you have a really good title, those things will be indexed. YouTube is like, last I heard, was like the second most popular um, search engine in all of the internet. So if people are searching on Google, they're still going to find your YouTube. And if they're searching on YouTube, they're going to find you even more. So as much information as you can put in there on YouTube, have your own channel, have a good channel description, and then every episode have a good description as well. That's going to help. Yeah, that's the missing piece. Thank you very much. You're welcome. No, have another question. Okay. Sure. So the question is, what company would you use to transcribe your episodes? Um, I'm now using castos.com. I pay for, I pay for um, hosting there. And one of the things that I pay for per episode is transcriptions of that. A lot of people use Descript. There's no free way to do them, unfortunately. However, I will tell you this little trick that I learned recently. If you upload your video or audio, I think video, I'm not sure about audio, in Slack, it automatically transcribes it, and you can copy and paste that anywhere. So, and that even works in free Slack. So that's a nice little thing that I've learned is that Slack will actually transcribe things for you as well. Thank you, Thank you for the question. What, you don't do Apple Podcasts? Like, how do you decide Yep, I, I'm aggregated out in almost all of the podcast aggregators. What are your favorite, like, what are the best things I've heard? It, it, 
most people listen through my YouTube and through my website itself, but it's but a lot of people have us um, on Apple Podcasts or on Podbean or Spotify, so they will find us in those places and be able to subscribe there, which works too. So um, I say be in as many places as you possibly can, and where you host, like Castos, actually for me, um, but all the places will help you connect your podcast to those end user places as well. And then I also, there's, there's um, I don't remember the name of it. If you look at, if you go to my wordpress.org, one of my favorited po- plugins is the podcast plugin that I use so that people can subscribe through all those different areas. And so you can put that right on your website so they can click and listen through app or click and listen through Podbean or whatever. You're welcome. There's lots of podcast plugins. So even Castos has one where you can upload everything through your, through your website and it loads it into Castos. Um, and that's free. You can, anybody can use that even without Castos, right? And it helps you have a custom post type for your podcast. It helps you fill in all the blanks and have the right imagery and all of that kind of thing. But um, uh, I don't remember what it's called. It's on, it's on Castos, though, but it, it'll help you do that. And then there's another one I use that just lets me link through to all the different podcast aggregators, so like Apple Podcasts and all those places. And so um, it's on my website. So if you click Apple Podcasts, it'll take you to our, it'll take you to WP Coffee Talk on Apple Podcasts and you can subscribe through there. For example. Yes. Yeah, it's not a question, but I just want to help you guys out about the captions. Yes. Um, I'm not sure if it will handle podcasts, but at least on video files, I just only recently discovered an app and a website called CapCut that if you feed it a video, it will generate the caption for you. And I've seen a, that on TikTok. It, it does <laughs> a pretty decent job of doing it. So yeah. obviously you have to review it, but mm-hmm. the accuracy is pretty astounding. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. And like even I talk about you know putting things out on Twitter and things like that. You can take like parts of your like snippets and use TikTok as well. So there are people that you can reach an entirely different audience that are TikTokers that aren't on Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook and things like that. So I, explore, I haven't done any of that myself. I should, so that next time I give this talk, I'll have more information for y'all. But, um, but yeah, there's lots of different places. So thank you. CapCut is something that is used in a lot of different places. And I will explore that more myself. I appreciate that. I think that's all we have time for. We have another person coming in who's probably like, oh, I'm out here in seven minutes, Michelle, get out of here. Um, again, Siri, I don't need your input. But um, I don't remember who the first three were, so I will be out, out here somewhere over on the side. You'll see me. Um, first three people to come up and talk to me. I have stickers. I have a couple of books for you, and I'm happy to share. Thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate you all.